Living will is your declaration for your desire to die a natural death. So you're saying, look, if I'm terminal, I'm, you know, incurable, I'm past the point of no return, it's okay to go ahead and let me go because I don't want to live in some type of, you know, persistent vegetative state. And, and this is an important note, a lot of people get this mixed up with a DNR. A DNR is very different. An attorney doesn't draft a do not resuscitate. That's a, legal, uh, a med medical classification that you request, you know, from a medical facility saying, don't take any type of extraordinary means to bring me back to life, to resuscitate me. Whereas a living will is saying, look, do your best. Try to bring me back. But if it's confirmed that I'm just, you know, brain dead, uh, lights are on but nobody's home, you can go ahead and let me go. Now, why would someone want a living will? Why is this something that someone would request? Personal reasons, number one. Maybe you don't want to imagine yourself languishing in that position. Another thing is, though, that it's important to understand that in North Carolina, spouses inherit medical debt, right? So, and personally the inherit. The doctrine of necessaries. That's right. They personally inherit medical debt under the doctrine of necessaries, unlike other debt. So if I rack up a bunch of credit card debt in just my name, my spouse is not going to inherit that. But if I, you know, develop some type of debilitating illness and I have to go to the hospital, have to, you know, rack up a bunch of bills, medical bills, she will inherit that. Right. So it's important to understand that if you don't have a living will, you could be in a position where you know, you're not able to express your own wishes and you could be racking up medical bills because someone has to make the decision. A loved one would have to make that decision. It's a hard decision to make. It takes time to make the decision as to whether or not to take somebody off life support. The longer it takes, the longer you know, you're racking up that medical debt. So not only do you get to express your wishes so you absolve somebody else of having to make that really hard decision, you also get to practically avoid unnecessary debt being inherited by your loved ones. Now, with respect to a living will, another important part is, and, and I'll ask you this, have you ever seen any type of issue with a family where a loved one has had to make that very hard decision, maybe as healthcare power of attorney, and it's caused an issue in the family. It, 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 it causes controversy sometimes. Um, I had an aunt who languished for probably 11 years wow. because her siblings couldn't agree. And uh, my father was really left to care for my aunt and be the primary decision maker, um, but everybody couldn't agree. And in that situation, um, it puts the person that needs either care or might want to be let go uh, in a in a really tough situation, it puts my, put my dad, put the whole yeah. family, you know, and, and and they just could not reach a decision, right? So you can clarify that and avoid controversy. I, I can't think of anything that is a document of more of greater responsibility, personal responsibility, than deciding if I'm in a terminal, persistent vegetative state. If the only medical procedures that can be done are going to prolong my suffering me saying it's okay to let me go in that right. situation, right? Yeah. And it can save, you know, my daughters, for example. I think that is a decision that would stick with them to have to unplug dad, right? Yeah. yeah. I, can, I can help them with that decision if I'm ever in that situation. Yeah, and, and a lot of folks think they can make that decision, and they probably can, but you really don't want, you, you would love that guidance. Sure. Let me ask you this. If I have specific religious concerns that I want certain rituals or religious ceremonies performed prior to be let, being let go, is that something that I would put in a living will? Absolutely. You know, I, that's something we routinely do for people with those convictions. We put whatever language is necessary in the living will to make sure that those things are performed prior to, you know, the actual, you know, removing the person from life support. Sure. I would like to offer a free consult to sit down with an attorney and review your estate plan and talk about what tools and estate planning would be right for you. You can take advantage of that free consult by going to mcelderlaw.com. That's M as in Mike, C as in Charlie, elderlaw.com or calling 1-888-999-6600. And thank you so much for joining us today.